Hello there, welcome to Showcase. From Egypt and Brazil to Mexico and China, Spanish photographer Isabel Munoz has made her way around the world to tell new stories. But those new stories are often related to ancient traditions and historic places, just like the archaeological sites in southeastern Turkey, where life once existed around 12,000 years ago. Well, she went there and brought her perspective to Istanbul's Para Museum. Göbekli Tepe in southeastern Turkey dates back to approximately 12,000 years ago. It's believed to be the oldest temple in the world, and there are other excavation sites nearby, including Karahan Tepe. And as a photographer who's been exploring nature, the origin of people and their lifestyles for more than four decades, Isabel Munoz felt the urge to visit those places. So she did. After four trips and taking thousands of photographs, her exhibit, A New Story, Photographs from and around Göbekli Tepe, is ready to meet viewers in Istanbul. I wanted to transmit the feeling and be as near as the people that live there, the artists that did the, 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 this, uh, this civilization, to be able to share, to be like a bridge between them and us. And then I think that all those motives are like a calligraphy. They wanted to tell us the story in a way. And I'm sure they, they of course, they, they, they were much more knowledgeable and they knew about the stars, about the constellations. For Munoz, photography is about feelings and sharing emotions. And while she tried to catch snaps reflecting the mystery of Quebec de Tepe and around, she also has come to realize that archaeologists working next to her do something similar. I think photography is about sharing, and I found out that archaeology was about sharing. I asked one of the young archaeologues that were on the site because they had just discovered uh, one of these big bulls that they were taking to the museum. And I thought, this is a treasure. And I asked them, what do you feel? You know, when... And they said, no, it's not only discovering a treasure, it's that we are doing a service for the society, for humanity. You know? And I felt very near him because photography is about that. Munoz says she sought to understand how people in the past lived and felt. And to reflect that better, she worked during the night and also used different materials and techniques. When we mix uh, sand, stone, uh, 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 serigraphy, uh, uh, gold uh, and so on, we, we have the, the impression to be uh, like alchemist, like uh, poetic alchemist of these uh, old times. Göbekli Tepe was discovered in 1963 and excavations have never stopped since then. And this exhibition at the Para Museum reveals what a world-famous photographer managed to take out from that mysterious area and how its people still inspire us generations later. Estradrust, TRT World, Istanbul. The Baksu Museum in the Turkish province of Bayburt is a prime example of art flourishing in the middle of nature, far away from city life. And the current exhibition at this unconventional art center draws inspiration from none other than the region's culture. Alican Pamir takes a look for us. To reach the Baksu Museum in Bayburt, you have to delve deep into the green landscape of the Black Sea. This art center, located in the Bayraktar village, is a statement made by its founder, Hussamettin Kochan. And that is, art should not be restricted to glitzy urban settlements. Since its establishment, Baksa has played host to artists from different backgrounds, handed them the Anatolia Awards, and provided scholarships to students. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe also appreciates the work. That's why the organization rewarded its 2014 Museum Award to Baksa. This museum has been a dream of mine since my youth. The idea behind founding it was to bring art to anywhere people live. I also wanted to do something for my hometown. 
The aim was to bring locals and modern art together and at the same time stop them from migrating to other cities. As for the current exhibition, we thought as Turkey enters its second century, it's important to host a female artist because women play an important role in our culture. The current exhibition is by Vuslat. Her showcase is called Emanet, a Turkish word that can be translated as something that is to be safe kept. It's a personal project for the artist because her family is also from the region. For the theme and the materials, she drew heavily from that environment. The event marks Vuslat's solo debut at Baksa, and she says the invite from the museum allowed her to get in touch with her roots. My art is, it's, very, it's a very intu intu intuitional process, so when I came first time to this geography, I said I'm going to leave my mind back at home and forget everything that I know about the region and see what will speak to me. And it was absolutely the geography. It was the river, it was the plants that I quoted in silver and in different materials. It's all, all the geography that talked to me. And I started taking bits and pieces of this and taking it back to my atelier in Istanbul, working on those and then coming back to region. So it's been a multiple trips, so to say. In that sense, it's been a challenging process, a challenging journey, but a very rewarding one. Um, I use pigments from, from, uh, that I developed, that I processed from the uh, local earth and stones. In my drawings, I used local uh, plants, molens, which are 2,000-year-old plants, completely beautiful plants for healing. And I coated them in silver to make them eternal. Locals say having such an art center has had an impact well beyond the borders of their region. Ever since the museum opened, people from all over the world started coming to our village. That creates a dialogue between them and us. It helped expand the village's horizons. Those who visit do business with locals as well. That helps our economy. And since our museum has been in both national and international news, Baksa has become a global brand. And this may prove that catering art to villages, however remote they may be, can not only help develop these areas, but also bind people to their cultural roots. Ali Can Pamir, TRT World, Baybut. The Louvre Museum in Paris is hosting 16 artworks rescued from a museum in Ukraine's capital, Kiev. The collection includes Byzantine icons, one of which dates back 1,500 years. Here's more. Ever since the war in Ukraine began, theft has become common in occupied territories and local museums have fought to save as many artifacts as they can to protect their national heritage. Uh, we have a situation that we don't only have a biggest since the Second World War uh, robbery of Ukrainian museum, but also the biggest evacuations. There are hundreds of thousands of artifacts which were saved in secure place during the war, but we need to do a lot of work for them. Thank you. The Louvre Museum and Elif Foundation, which is the international alliance for the protection of cultural property in conflict zones, have worked with Ukrainian authorities to move some of these artworks abroad. Five of the Byzantine icons are now on display at Toulouv, as a part of an exhibition called The Origin of the Sacred Image. The Ukrainians decided to transfer 16 works to France, including the five icons that are on display here today. They were transported to France on specially made crates and inside trucks with special security through Ukraine, Poland, Germany and France. So it was indeed a very important job that was done discreetly. Eleven of the works were too fragile to showcase and they will be stored in the museum until the situation in Ukraine improves. 
ans et demi. There is need to protect these artifacts in good condition, particularly in terms of combating humidity. Because when we put them in places, we have to be sure that the humidity isn't too high, especially for the icons. The icons will remain on display in Paris until November. Another exhibition is marking the 50th anniversary of Pablo Picasso's death. Prada Museum in Madrid has a new show, but this one reveals Picasso's fascination with El Greco. Picasso, El Greco, an analytical cubism exhibition at Madrid's Prado Museum, looks at the influence of El Greco on Pablo Picasso's work. It compares a dozen of Picasso's paintings with those by El Greco in terms of color, brush strokes, and composition. Well, this exhibition is our contribution to the 50th anniversary of Picasso's death, and we have done so with a very precise, very specific theme which is the relationship or the inspiration that Picasso may have found in El Greco for what was his greatest contribution, probably the most revolutionary to the history of painting, which is analytical cubism. The exhibition's curator, Carmen Jimenez, says the first cubist artist was in fact El Greco, and his techniques are what profoundly influenced Picasso's work. This exhibition is essential. Let's say it's the cubism that originated with El Greco, especially from his last period. Throughout El Greco's career, one can also see the influence he could have had on cubism. But above all, it's in the last apostles where El Greco felt free and really began to do what Pacheco called the cruel smudges, which are what inspired Picasso, who came here as a student at the Academy of Fine Arts. And during the time he spent in the Prado, he was fascinated by El Greco. Another important connection explored is between Picasso and the Prado Museum. He was appointed director of the institution in 1936, and the exhibition also presents some relevant documents from that time. This exhibition at the Prado Museum is of exceptional importance because Picasso was the director of the museum during the Civil War. That means that there is a very particular link, apart from the fact that Picasso visited this museum practically from the time he was a child. Those visits to the museum planted the first seeds that grew into Picasso's easily recognized style. The first time he comes to the Prado, he is fascinated by Velázquez. The second time he comes to the Prado, he is fascinated by El Greco. He discovers El Greco. And it's the beginning of Cubism. Let's say El Greco is the one who made Picasso see the double dimensionality. And so we can say that he was fundamental in the conception of Cubism. And despite the more than 300 years that separate the two masters, the dialogue between their works speaks volumes. Wes Anderson has just released his latest film, Asteroid City, and his star-studded cast agree that living on location while filming the comedy was a one-of-a-kind experience. You're not here. We're not there. The Asteroid City is a play within a TV special within a movie. So how does that work? Well, the latest Wes Anderson film takes place in a southwestern desert town in the US, where a group of characters gather for different reasons, including for a stargazing convention. Each year we celebrate Asteroid Day. It's a play being performed, which itself is being filmed for a TV broadcast. The sci-fi romantic comedy drama was shot an hour outside Madrid, where the cast stayed at an old monastery near the set. What? Oh, the beeps and blips? It's a very rare experience to have that kind of familial surrounding. Usually when we go on location, we're at a hotel, and you might have dinner with, with a castmate uh, after work. This was all here. You went to work together, you, you ate dinner together, then in the morning, you, you had breakfast together, you saw each other in the wardrobe, hair, and makeup departments. It was, it was a company. It was, it was really refreshing. And I think that's something that, that actors long for, is to have that sense of community. 
I've just informed the president. And for Scarlett Johansson, working this way was like a dream come true. But don't tell my kids. Usually actors want to sit and talk to each other yeah. like forever, you know, like it's hard to get people to go to work because we're usually in yeah. a tent yeah, talking, yeah. like gossiping and chatting and whatever. And so to be able to actually go home and then, I mean, I would just run back to my room, throw my script bag on the bed and just like scurry downstairs as fast as I could so I didn't miss anything, you know? Sometimes I think I feel more at home outside the Earth's atmosphere. The film has received generally favorable reviews from critics. It's been called Anderson's most spiritual film to date. And then David Kaplan has described it as not so hilarious as his previous work, but definitely unorthodox, as fans of Anderson know. Huh? Did I say yes? You didn't say anything. Uh, I meant yes, my, my mouth didn't speak. Art Basel is in full swing, but for those who don't plan to visit the main event, there's a whole different show scattered around the city. Take a look. These straw men by artist Kaspar Muller have been specifically designed for Basel's main square. It's part of Art Basel's Parcours exhibition and one of 24 works on show across public spaces. But this is more than just a sculpture park as the works are on display both indoors and out with a lot of them made specifically for this event. Once you have an artwork on a fair booth with 50 other works hanging next to it, or it's in a white cube in a museum where it's very isolated, you, it, it speaks a very different language. If you put an artwork in the real world context, often, and it's in the living room of somebody's house or it's in a gift shop, we can place artworks anywhere here in the city, it all of a sudden touches the general public uh, much more directly and it, 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 it gives access to people who might not normally know, look at contemporary art. And inside the central hall of a civic building hangs Noah Eskal's brightly coloured textiles. Hopefully by putting it in locations where you don't expect it, because there's also a lot of passerbyers here who might go get permits here because we're here in this, for example, here in this building we're in the construction and, and, and uh, traffic department. People come here to get permits to build streets and houses and stuff like that. And they might not be here for parkour and they might just be really pleasantly surprised to encounter something like this. So what does the public think of this exhibition? Oh, I loved it. I'm just loving it because you don't have to walk into a museum to see art. I think art should be everywhere and open to the public for everybody to see. Though not everyone is quite so enthusiastic. I don't mind art in public places. It's, I, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. But th this is pleasant enough. It just seems to me in the end, when it's over, they should torch it. It just seems natural. Both Art Basel and Parkours run until June 18. Pompeii's most famous townhouse has finally reopened after 20 years of restoration. Its frescoes and vivid colors take visitors all the way back to ancient Rome. This is a domus, a type of townhouse that was common in major cities of the Roman territories 2,000 years ago. They were typically owned by the upper class or just like the House of the Vetti in Pompeii by wealthy former slaves. The House of the Vetti is um, like um, the, the history of Pompeii and actually of, of Roman society within one house. So you have the great artwork, the, we are seeing here the last phase of the um, Pompeian wall painting with incredible um, details. So you can s stand before these images for hours and still discover uh, new, new details. And uh, there are the sculptures in the garden. So you have this um, mixture, nature, architecture, art. But it's also a story about the social life of um, the Pompeian uh, society and, and actually Roman, the Roman world in this uh, phase of, the, of history. Named after its owners, the house belonged to two men who did not come from noble Roman families but had to work hard to climb the social ladder. And they 
evidently try to, to kind of show their new status also uh, through culture and through uh, Greek mythological paintings and you know, it's, it's all, all about saying well we, we have made it and so we are now part of this elite, local elite in, in the Roman world. Apart from denoting status, the decorations had other purposes. Uh, the House of the Vetti has always been um, a case study on how do these paintings reflect the dreams and imagination and anxieties of the, of the owners um, because they lived in between these images and so on, on the one hand we see Greek myth which is a very um, learned, you know, um, kind of showing off your, your knowledge because during the banquets you then had to comment these paintings and you could show that you really uh, understood what was going on there. And then it's also uh, sometimes um, some kind of um, identification. The restorers have worked hard to make sure all this beauty survives another 2,000 years. These frescoes had a particularly fortunate life because they were protected from the very first excavations of the house in the sense that covers were immediately made that therefore preserved a lot of the decorative fabric. But that means reversing the work of some of their predecessors which, though well attended, did more harm than good. On the other hand, since they were considered important frescoes from the very beginning, they underwent a whole series of very heavy-handed maintenance procedures, such as a repeated application of paraffin to revitalize the colors and restore the legibility of the image, which resulted in them becoming very blurred over time, because very thick and opaque layers formed, making it difficult to read the fresco. Now that the work on the Domus is done, it's clear we have one of the most catastrophic natural events of antiquity to thank for this pristine window into history. Nigerian artist Malik Afekboa is using artificial intelligence to reimagine elderly African people who he says are often marginalized strutting on the catwalk. Angelo Kamada reports. White-haired men and women strut down the catwalk in the latest fashions. But this is not real life. These hyper-realistic images have been created using artificial intelligence by a Nigerian artist. Malik Afebwa was first inspired to reimagine the roles of elderly African people after his mother fell ill. I wanted to see them in a different space. And what inspired that was my personal relationship with my mom as well. So I wanted to see, you know, always, you know, imagine the elderly people in a place that is not um, either in, in a sad space or in a, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a suppressed state. The artist and filmmaker says the work is a response to the marginalization of many elderly African people in society, especially in the fashion world. That history speaks a lot for us that we need to learn from to know where we're going to. So why don't we tap into that? You know, so that love for that, um, to, to find out more about them is always me trying to tap into that space. So for me trying to tap into that space already, I like to explore in terms of what are they missing out on, what's going on in society and how can they be inclusive. A February's images, which form his elder series, have been widely shared on social media. As well as the catwalk, they also feature settings ranging from the beach to the boxing gym, as he seeks to showcase a brighter side of getting old. Nigerian artist Eugene Komboye is turning discarded plastic flip-flop sandals into colorful portraits in what he says is an effort to help clean up the environment in a country where plastic pollution is prevalent. I 
I started working with this in 2017 as a student of algebra technique and uh, it started as an assignment for me and uh, after I did my assignment I found out that this is something I can do, this is something I have a strength and I have flair for so I continued. After I get them, I bring them into my studio for clean up. So I clean them properly, um, I disinfect, I wash, so they become clean for my own safety. It's not just something that Africans are fighting, it's not something that is just um, about Nigeria, this is about the world. That's it for this episode of Showcase. I'm Esther Adrist from me and the whole team here in Istanbul. Thanks for watching and bye for now.